Hello and welcome to my mess that is my work desk. Normally you only see a little bit of it and I'm a little more in the frame today, but I try to, to film everything. Today is super nice weather. It's the sun is shining so bright so I actually had to pull the curtain to be able to film because otherwise it would just be super sunshine and looking weird. So I want to go out and I want to try if I can figure out how to bring you guys with me. I'm going to bring my phone and my camera. I got a, a SLR camera and I think that might be able to do some videotaping. I don't know how much actually. I guess that depends on my size of my chips. And so, Anyways, other than taking photos and, and maybe some video, I'm going to bring some art supplies and I'm going to do some sketches out there. And I'm going to go briefly through some whys and why nots. Why not acrylic? You guys stay home. And they stay home because I do not want to bring brushes and a palette and a lot of rinse water and uh, sit out there. Drying time is not an issue with, with, with acrylics, but all that water and wet brushes and a wet palette and stuff, no, I don't really want to do that. I'm going to go to a, a public area where we're out in nature. And there won't be restrooms or anything like that really close by necessarily. So, plus, okay, so I'm at a public restroom and I know what my sink looked like when I've been washing a, a pallet. And I don't want to stand there and, and clean it because then I need to bring professional cleaning utensils because I don't know who have done what in that sink before I go. So, too much of a hassle. Um, watercolor, a little bit of the same, minus the palette and everything could dry up and stuff, but I still don't want to bring rinse water. So, pencils, I got all kinds of fancy pencils here, I got these pit oil based ones, and they could go, um, but the point gets worn down and I need to sharpen them. And then I need something, no, can't be bothered today. Same with graphite pencils, no. But we could take graphite pencils because I got mechanical pencils out the wild zoo. So yeah, let's bring a couple of those. I already picked one out. I'm going to bring another one just for the sake of it. And I found some, some lead. It's just HB.5 lead for my very old eight, uh, mechanical pencils. Um, pens. I picked out some here and I'll talk about them. But there was different options of really nice pens here of, of different brands. Um, and these I picked out all nice. Well, everything in that cup is nice. But I know if I sit out there with a cap, it's going to disappear. And we're back to a little bit of the same issue with the wet paint and the wet... No. So click pens and mechanical pencils it is. I'm a little worried about even bringing that, but if I lose a little thing of HB lead, it's not the end of the world. Everything else will work. So here's a pencil case. And, um, so two mechanical pencils because just, and then three click pens. There's a friction bluish black here, uh, or blue black it's called, and it's a 0.7 click pen. I hate ballpoint bl pen blue, the regular blue ink is such a, a color that puts me off. But this one, black, uh, blue black, it is actually more like a paint gray, so I actually really quite like that. Then there's a Pilot G2 0.5 pen. It's a little thinner, and this is black, and it's a gel pen. And since I'm not doing watercolor, this is fine. And that one is actually also not waterproof. Um, yeah, gel pens are generally not waterproof. And then I got this one, which is maybe the one I'll do the most with. It has a needle point. See, a tiny little t tip on it. And it's a Pilot 
high tech point v5 rt and i love the the v v series here they got v5 and v7 i think um i got another one that uh, is refillable i'm not sure this one is but i believe that has a cap on it as well so let's just quickly take things out with caps and put them away i think it's that one uh, nope nope no one no absolutely not i got a lot of friction pens in here oh yeah no No, no, no. Uh, nope. Cheapers. They all got caps. We got a pen obsession in this house. There it was. It's not even that one. Yeah. So. Here is actually a V5, and this is fancy because it has a cartridge in it, so you, and you can buy a refill without ditching the whole pen. And I'm more and more looking for things that can be refilled in terms of pens and markers and stuff, because I, I really, I don't mind plastic and I don't mind using plastic, but I mind throwing out when there's nothing wrong. Um, this one and the other ones here, when I'm done, that one I can buy refills for as well. I'm unsure about this one. It's a pilot pen. Um, I'm unsure if I can get refills for that. But the cheap Pilot G2, I cannot do a refill. And I have to throw the whole pen away just because there's no more ink. And I'm trying to to use things up and get rid of things that, that can't be refilled. I might go back on that a little bit, but, but in general, I like things that can be refilled. So I'll bring this bunch. You had a cap, so you stay home. So I don't have to bring anything that produces trash today. Um, no caps, no wet media. Um, just what have we got here? We got five different pens and that is probably four too many but I got a little bit of a choice move out of my way already so picked a couple of other things here I took uh, I decided on two sketchbooks the both from uh, Flying Tiger of Copenhagen it's like a dollar store shop uh pound shop and they got really inexpensive uh, sketchbooks this one is nice it has that yellowish paper that actually is kind of similar to the the sketchbooks from uh art creative from talents but this cost a lot less this one was one i considered and then i got this big one here and um I didn't like it at first. Uh, it doesn't work with a lot of things, but actually the pens. I think I actually did all of these sketches with one of the v, V5 pens. The difference between the Pilot V5 and the P, Pilot V7 is the size. The, I like the V5 best because it's a 0.5 pen. The V7 is a 0.7. And the, that worked out really good. So. I'm bringing this. Now I don't know how windy it will be where I'm going because it's kind of close to the coast. So I got these two clips so I could probably clip. These are meant for for drawing boards to clip your paper onto with that. But I think I could probably pinch a paper. At least so do it like that. And have a bunch of papers so all of it doesn't flap. So. I don't have any bull, uh, bulldog clips or something like that. I should actually get that. I might try and stop on the way out to do that. So we've got two pan 
a sketchbook and a pad. And I like this because it has a spiral on it. So I'm not having to deal with, with loose papers flying everywhere or getting lost somewhere. This one. And I think that that's what <laughs> that's going to be my art kit. I know that other artists, they have these huge, intricate art supply things they bring with them. And uh, I really admire that. Uh, one of the people I admire a lot for going out and do art out in nature is Sarah Burns. If you don't know her, look her up. She's an amazing American landscape artist who lives in Scotland. She, um, and she has this whole thing where she can set up on tripods and art bags and amazing. I'm just not the Sarah Burns and I'm never going to be, I think. <laughs> but uh, it could be fun to, to, to try and do some sketches outside. So let, let, let me give it a go. I'm just really difficult. I also got a bag for all of this. I could actually fit this in my, my camera bag, but I, I don't think I, I want to. Um, I just got a regular knapsack. It's like a school knapsack with a ton of room in There's actually a notepad in there with tons of rooms. And I could actually just put my art supplies in here, but I don't have to. So. And there's room for a computer and everything. So there's lots and lots of room in this one. And that will be my art bag for today. I should probably make myself a lunch bag as well to bring. Because I don't want to retire. Just have junk food. So that was the arty part of this. I will not go through my camera stuff. I already put it out in the car. Um, but I got a tripod. I got an SLR camera. I'm going to bring my phone. I don't have a holder for the tripod for my phone. I think. Unless it's in some dubious drawer here. Nope. Nope. So uh, the camera, uh, phone camera will be handheld. And I'll see how my SLR camera does with video. I know it can, but I don't know how good it is. So, um, enough studio for now. Let's get moving. So, we made it out to the island of Els. And this is called Nørnskogen. The English translation of that would be the North Forest or the Northern Forest. And um, here in the midground, we got kind of a little lake. And out in the background, behind the trees, is uh, the sea. And it's not, not a very wide stretch of sea. It's salt water, and it's. If we go closer. It's a couple of three kilometers, I think stretch of water and on the other la side of that is the island of Funen. Mainland Denmark is consists of a, um, a peninsula that is attached to Germany and the rest is islands scattered around that mostly to the east of here. Um, and yeah, I'm always looking at stuff. When I'm out and about, so here's some interesting fungus on a tree stump, and I'm also kind of fascinated about the colors and the patterns of bark and moss on bark and stuff. I don't really want to sit down and draw here because this was not what I was looking for. This is one of the problems about using a GPS for a destination. I, um, I was looking up actually burial mounts in this area and there's a huge amount of them. I was looking for one in particular that was looking particularly interesting. And so I kind of 
said yes to Google Map to have it to show me where it is. And according to Google Map, it is out in the middle of that little lake there. So the tourist information of the area has just said, okay, because there's a parking lot here and my car is parked over behind here. Can't see it. That this is the place to go and park your car. That's all fine. I don't know why they put the marker down in the lake there. But, um, so there's a hiking path here somewhere. I think I need to go along the beach. And um, then I have to find these burial mounts myself. Which is all good and fine, but it would have been nice if it, they, could, they could put some pinpointers kind of marking it up and saying you should go here like exactly here and I'm gonna turn away because I'm not gonna show those people's license plates that just go by me and if I can see the license plates of any of the other cars here um, I'll try and blur that out if I can I suspect that those people in that car might be looking for the same thing I do. Um, so yeah. But here's some tourist information. Here's something about the area. And we're out here at this parking lot. And I think these or that, oh my god, I got dirty fingers. I think that or that is what I'm looking for. It could potentially be down there, there, and there. All these little circles with, that looks like stars, is actually those burial mounds. So, um, I might have to take a little bit of a hike. So there's actually one right across the road over there by the looks of it. It's not particularly easy to see. But I think I'll stop this video and take a photo and try and use that as my guide. So here's my burial mound. I don't know how much I filmed and how much it, it cut off. I think I talked for several minutes without anything filming. So it's made of five large granite boulders. That one is maybe broken down. I would expect they put one in and it looks like this one was modified to lean on one more. But I don't know if that's why how they did it. It's probably somewhere around 3,000 years old um, on top of a hill um, there's a wood pig over there somewhere and birch trees so I'll take some photos of this and show you later okay so here is some stills and if you wanna do use them as reference photos you can pause the video I try to aim for five seconds for each, so that should be enough time to to pause them. I took some additional photos going back to the car. So what I didn't say on the video was that uh, it took me actually about two hours to find this because I ended up going in the completely wrong direction and didn't find what I was looking for for a long time. And I talked to some people and yeah, time just passed. I did manage to get a little bit of footage taken. Um, yeah. So, um, off to next stop. Okay, I'm on my way home. And here's an oak. A huge old oak. I wonder if that's one of those marrying oats. Oaks. Oats. I'm hungry. And here's a... <laughs> there's an old moat been dug out there in there there's no house there anymore 
but uh, you get wet feet if you want to go in there. And, uh, it's called Helvede Gård Voldsted. And I have no idea what this is. It says it's an old Voldsted. Um, and it was mentioned the first time in 1321. It has had a building that was made in, in stone, eight and a half by twenty and a half meters, and surrounded by a moat. Blah blah blah, something about. Okay, so it has been part of some royal's place. But I doubt that they could have had much here. Other than maybe stashing something. Don't know. I'm not gonna read all of it. I got some hungry horses I have to take care of. I don't wanna go home because this place is so beautiful. But uh, again, I got out a little too late today. And I spent well over two hours finding the tombstone. But look at that, and there's just like a little cluster of. What do you call those? Cones? Pine cones? They cut something down. And there's some ivy crawling up this tree. I'll stop filming and take some photos of that. Just a couple of quick photos here. Not super good, but they're there. Next destination. Okay, so I took a brief stop here. This is a very narrow bridge. You can only fit one car over. It's called the Green Bridge. And it's a little granite bridge actually. I tried to film with my DSL camera and I don't know if that footage was any good. I hope so. But uh, yeah. The stream here is kind of muddy. I expect it to clear up later this year. We have had tons and tons of water in all of February and formal rain. So I um, kind of expect all of the streams to look somewhat like this because it's, when there's a lot of rain, things start to erode. And that's me clay that is floating around in that water. So, um, yeah, this is such a gorgeous place and I hate that I have to go home. There's lots of little streams and stuff here. Lakes and trees and a deer and I don't know if you can hear the pheasant that is out looking for ladies. Somebody to make his chicks with this here. So, um, yeah, no drawing today, but maybe later today in the studio. As I was getting out of the car here, there was a deer that crossed the road, and um, I got one, that one shot of him. There's the bridge on the other side, and from the top. Okay, I'm still on my way home and I'm quite sure I found the wedding oaks. I'm just in the car. I have to really, really have to go. But look at that. Look at the light of the, on those. Beautiful, beautiful. I owe you an explanation on those wedding oaks. It was in times of old, young men had to plant an oak in this area before he could get married. Oaks were important for something like shipbuilding, for instance. And while I talk, you just get some additional footage that I shot out there today. And um, yeah, we will be stopping at the next stop soon. So I made it to the horses in time. They get a little bit of grass while 
they are waiting for their hay, which I'm done giving them now. They just haven't discovered it. So they're not un unhappy even though it's a little late. So, horses are fed. Um, uh, this is actually a little pat, patch of trees that is on their field. And you can see I got a follower. This youngster, she's following me everywhere because maybe we would do something funny and interesting. I gave up on my big camera for now because um, it's a little clunky and I don't want clunky stuff when I'm around the horses especially the youngster there it's not that she's behaving badly it is just um, she might push me a little bit and I don't want to be holding on to my camera while I'm doing that. she's doing that she's starting to to lose her winter coat so she's itchy everywhere and she wants to tell me where it itches so but I got my knapsack with me and my pens and my pad and I actually like how those trees reflect in the water so I'm definitely gonna take a photo so if it's hopeless here I can do something maybe in the studio. Got my book out. <laughs> and I got a red helper here. Hey, get your nose out <laughs> there. So, as soon as I stood still and I stopped talking, she um, she actually started chewing on my <laughs> my knapsack, <laughs> and now she wants to have a bite at my my book. I. Go away, silly. Silly girl. Yeah, she is so curious about stuff. Are you gonna steal my my view? Yeah. They do have clean water up by the stable, but this water is just the best in the world. As long as there's water here, they don't drink from the other. But we have to have it. We can't tell you that it's the RSPCA that we got natural water. And now you keep your wet muzzle away, okay? No, she absolutely didn't go away. I had to give up drawing because she kept on muzzling me. Here she's chewing on my backpack. And yeah, she was just too curious. And I was laughing so hard. Um, I got those three trunks started there. But she was just all over me. Um, so I checked something out where I got into some mud and lost my boots and kicked water in my boots. So I had to go home right after that. But it was a normal fun day also with the horses. Pew! That editing of what you just saw was special. Not in a bad way, it was in a good way. I did new stuff and it was a, the challenging part was to get my files off my phone because uh, some things had changed since I last downloaded files from my phone to my computer. So it was a little challenging to f change the settings. And um, there were some things I had to figure out and yeah, I'm afraid that candy became my supper today. I will go and eat something proper in a little bit, but I had to have something to keep my blood sugar up. And I think it's plenty up there's more wrappers than I care to admit to. I want to ha have a couple of comments here before I go. So I was actually pleased with, with my, <laughs> my low key supplies. Um, it wasn't very much art that I managed to do today. I got three tr tree trunks kind of started here. Um, and a little bit of the edge of the, the pond. Um, yeah, my and I want to comment on my, my young friend there. My friend's Icelandic mare. 
and tell you a little bit about her and our relationship and why I was okay with sitting next to her. As I said, she's four years old. She came a year and a half, two years ago to us after my, my friend bought her. She's been bred as they do in Iceland. They pretty much just leave them alone while they're, they're young. They get fed, they get dewormed and, and the farrier take care of their feet and all that. But they don't get trained in any particular way. And um, so they're unspoiled and they get brought up by other horses. And that's a good thing. Horses that is brought up by humans can be kind of nasty because they, they can get some really bad habits and stuff. So we got that a really, really young raw mare and we're both have been working our adult lives pretty much with, with horses in different connections. So we have trained her and I have been actually spending a lot of time training her because I got time. My friend has the money and no time. She has a full time job. She has kids. She has other obligations. So sometimes I, uh, I take little red mare there and, and do stuff with her, train her. Um, to each taught her to go uh, be, be led on a rope and stuff. So she trusts me very, very much. I trust her and uh, I can read her body language. The place I sat was like there was this pile of big pile of branches and stuff. And I sat on the edge of that and she stood in front of me or next to me. She moved around a little bit. And if something had happened, it's a place where there's lots of people around and there's stuff going on in the forest behind us or in the, on the road next to us. So if there has been happening something that would have scared her, she wouldn't have ran into me because she wouldn't run into a pile of, of branches. She would have run away. And she has super much respect for people and she has super much respect for other horses. So if she gets a little giddy and, and starts to kick up and stuff, she make sure to look over her shoulder that she's well away from us. I've never seen her kick up anywhere more than five, six, seven meters away from anybody. And um, she has never kicked anybody. And I trust her not to kick me. And if she does, it's, my, it's on me. If you're out and about and you want to sit down and sketch at some place, please don't do what I did if it is any kind of animal that you don't know personally and have a very close relationship with. It is horses, cattle, llamas, goats, sheep, whatever. The, anything that weighs more than 20 kilos or so. Just, just don't sit next to them because they can knock you over, they can kick you, and they can really, really harm you. Um, and they're maybe not safe for strangers to be around. I wouldn't ask anybody to take a friend or something into that field and ask them to sit next to me on that pile of wood either, because I know how that horse reacts to me and around me, but I don't know how it reacts to the next person. Um, some people has good chemistry with animals, others not so much. So please be safe around animals. In general, do not enter fields with with animals unless there is that uh, they're used to strangers. There, there are some places where they have cattle that is grazing off stuff, and if you leave them alone, they will leave you alone if you just ignore them. Um, it's a safety precaution, and, and please observe that. Um, as for art, <laughs> yeah, not today. I have lots of footage you saw most of what I took today and I will try and turn that into some art or, or have it as inspiration to, to add some elements to, to some landscapes and stuff. I can't think of anything more to, to say. I want some supper and I hope you had some fun watching my my helpful helpful? No, helpless first video log. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.